Here's one of my latest tests in SR Counter Trend 2. We spent a lot of time talking about SR Counter Trend 2. Still excited about this portfolio and the potential. And so I continue to research it. And this is um, a different setup than our previous SR Counter Trend 2 um, in the fact that we're using this, all the same parameters on all markets. And here is the equity curve. And here is the performance summary. Here is the total trade analysis. I want you to know the balance between long and short trades. Uh, $74 on the long side, $73 on the short side, uh, 1,646 trades on the long side, 1,684 trades on the short side. Now there is one difference. I have changed the code, and the code changes include different long and short parameters for some parameters, not all. I want to show you those. Now I'm showing you the results in the portfolio back tester for multi charts. These results um, are combined results of all strategies, and you can still get these these strategies in TradeStation, NinjaTrader, and multi charts. Multi charts just gives us a way to back test this all in one place. And so this is not just for multi charts, but TradeStation, multi charts, and NinjaTrader, and the multi charts results show us the combined results for what would happen if you combine these strategies, regardless of the platform. And so um, there are some some small differences sometimes between platforms and the results. And so the latest thing that I've changed in this is let's go format the signal. I have changed. I have added a different long and short input for percent range. And on the short side, it's 0.3, and on the long side, it's 0.5. And this using the same parameters for all markets. In the previous setup, I had to list the strategy signal um, separately for different markets and so um, the stop loss for the long side is 800 the stop loss for the short side is 700 the profit target for the long side is 500 the stop the profit target for the short side is 600 um, I think the result the the changes um, don't matter as much for the stop loss and profit target as much as they do for the percent range and then the um, length the length um, is 20 on the long side and 30 on the short side. The number of deviations, precision, and X, those all stay the same regardless of if you're long or short. But the two um, entry rules that change are percent range and then the length. Those are the only differences between longs and shorts. And so the reason I did this was to try to find a way to balance the long and short trades so there's as many longs as shorts and to make the average trade profit the same and the, the concept is is that it takes a little longer uh, the length is 30 so it takes a little longer uh, for the short trades to develop but once they do um, the percent range short is smaller and so these are not big differences and they're not optimized to the single uh, you know point I didn't go in and test 31 32 33 34 I mainly tested uh, 10 20 30 um, increments in 10 and I mainly test these in increments of 0.1 and it's a manual I didn't do an exhaustive research exhaustive optimization because that takes so long It'd take a week to uh, exhaustively optimize a lot of these if, if I did a lot of these parameters at once it would take a long time to do it and so there's only real two entry parameters that are changed percent range long is 0.5 percent range short is 0.3 and the length on the long side is uh, 20 and the length on the short side is 30 and um, those are the only differences on the entries now the exits slight differences in the profit targets and stop losses I don't think it would matter that much if they were the same I think the main thing is these two entry parameters and the main thing is the length on the short side that matters the most and again the one thing that I wanted to achieve is the balance in, in the trade the trade balance the number of trades and the average trade profit right here 74 total, 74.50 in a long, 73.74 on the short. And I'm using our nine markets. And this is on 15 minute bars. I want you to notice that before it's on five, five uh, it's been on five minutes. And I tested it on 15 minutes. I've tested it on five minutes. And I've tested it on one minute. And I'm going to show you the results for all of the parameters. I'm going, this video shows you 15 minutes. I'm going to pause it show it you for five minutes and I'm going to show you for one minute there's not a lot of difference and I'm going to lay this out and I really like the uh, balance of this portfolio um, if we look at the markets here the overview of each signal 
it's a little low on the 15 minutes for soybeans and so that's the one thing that I would want to improve the ES is a little low on this for uh, the 15 minutes and so we're gonna see the differences between one minute five minute and 15 minute and if you can trade multiple contracts you could trade the original portfolio that we talked about with um, each market having its own settings um, you could trade one contract on the general portfolio where we have different long and short parameters on 15 minute bars you could trade another um, set of parameters on five minute bars and another set of parameters on one minute bars and you get a really good balance like that um, it would require four contracts per market to trade it like this um, and to, to create this complete balance of portfolios and so that's the um, that's what I want to show you on 15 minutes I'm going to pause the video and then next results will be five minutes and the next results will be one minute so here's the nine system portfolio using the different long and short parameters on five minute bars instead of 15 minute bars and so our original time interval does much better and you can see that um, in the performance summary look at, look at the equity curve with the drawdown and so uh, nice results here in recent years there's been less than 10k drawdown um, using these parameters um, trade analysis 74 average trade profit now we're, we're using $25 round turn slippage and commission and so this is right at hundred dollars before round turns before round turn slippage and commission and after it's 74 um, the long trades are slightly better than the short trades on five minute bars and um, let's look at the annual period analysis here's the annual period analysis what it would have done in the past and you see pretty consistent results and let's take a look at the overview by market much better on the ES and the soybeans 25,000 and 15,000 on these and let's look at let's see what else do we like to look at let's look at um, that's basically it um, I want to take a look at the equity curve analysis and you can see each market maximum equity run up maximum equity drawdown you see natural gas as the highest and so you can sum up all these drawdowns and um, you see our bob and natural gas and platinum are higher and um, so you could trade you know trade some of these markets if you don't have as much capital trade some of these markets with lower drawdowns a combination of those you can maybe remove natural gas Arbob and platinum and just trade these other markets but you can see um, when you combine signals the maximum equity drawdown is less than the sum of the drawdowns of all markets and so um, this is useful information to have and so a lot of useful information the multi charts portfolio back tester we're gonna go now and look at the one minute bars I've traded change them to um, one minute you can see um, you can see here that the parameters are the same but I've just changed these on data one from 15 minute to five minute I will change them to one minute run it again and we can take a look at the results that way we'll have an analysis of 15 minute five minute and one minute all on SR counter trend 2 on these nine markets here is the one minute variation um, trading um, it took a little longer to calculate you can see it is the highest total net profit and we look at the equity curve with drawdown here is the drawdown um, it takes place takes place at a different time the worst case drawdown takes place at a different time than the uh, five minute and so there is some inverse correlation and uh, let's see the max drawdown is 12,000 and um, let's see here is the equity curve here's the trade analysis uh, really nice balance between long and short trades here I really like that only uh, 11 trades difference number of trades 11 and there's only uh, 16 cents difference in the um, average trade for the winners and losers this is inclusive of $25 round turn slippage and commission the annual period analysis um, let's take a look here very consistent very very consistent now we've talked about this before in 2007 the date starts in 2007 which we calculated but if you look at the overview of the of each market um, uh, it, the signals don't take place until between March 
in June, and so it's not a full year of analysis. So 2007, on um, the annual period analysis, is not a full year, but from 2008 until 2011, those are very consistent. 2012 to 2014, those numbers are very consistent. 2015 uh, and 16, very high numbers. 2017 is, is a drop off, as we can see, um, and consistent with volatility, low ranges. And then uh, 2018, 59, 87 on 116 trades, one third of the way through the year. And so you could uh, multiply that number by three and get um, a number um, going out for the rest of the year potentially. We're not even done with April yet. They're only halfway done with April. If we do a monthly analysis on this interval, we see um, we can see the consistency. Um, but some months are better than others. January and February are high. The highest months are yet to come in November. December is really low. And so if you're going to take a month off, December would be the month to take off, which would fall in line with uh, many of the holidays that we have. And so March and April are some of the lowest months. And so May, May picks up, July picks up, August, all these, all these months are good. And so the lowest, we're in the lowest months right here in March and April and June and December. So um, going forward, there's uh, some nice months to look forward to in the monthly analysis. Let's look at the overview by signal. Um, you see 28,000 on the ES, it's higher on the one minute. So the lower the time frame, the better this gets. Um, the five minute was 25,000. Um, gold gets higher too on this number. Crude oil is, l is lower, gold is higher. Um, and soybeans are higher as well on one minute. And so uh, nice numbers here on the one minute overall. Um, let's take a look at, um, I like to look at correlation too. Let's look at the based on daily equity. And so if you look at this based on daily equity, the correlation numbers are very low. If something is at 1.0, it's exactly correlated. Um, minus one is in, completely inversely correlated. So these numbers are relatively low. The high numbers are, for example, 0.36. So there's a high correlation between gold and silver. If you look in this column, you see silver, same number correlated to gold in the same way, 0.36. But the rest of these numbers are relatively low on a daily basis. And you have negative numbers which show some negative correlation. So we look for negative and inverse correlations between systems and markets. On a monthly basis, you get even more inverse correlations. Um, the ES and the NQ are high on this monthly correlation between the NQ and the ES. You get 0.49. And between gold and silver, you get 0.48. And so gold and silver are highly correlated. ES and NQ are highly correlated, which we, you would expect. Um, take a number like um, you know, soybeans and gold, very inversely correlated. ES and gold are inversely correlated. It's a negative number. And so you get a negative correlations and then positive correlations where you'd expect you get platinum and silver at 0.23, um, platinum and gold at 0.12. And so those are in the same sector, so you would expect those correlations. Let's look at the annual um, correlations, silver and gold, 0.48, uh, e NASDAQ, and e S&P, 0 0.49. And um, silver and platinum is 0.23. And so our bob in gold is, is minus 0.12. Let's see, is that the largest inverse correlation? And I believe it is. Oh, 0.15 between platinum and our bob. And so um, those are nice numbers to take a look at. And um, that is the one-minute analysis. The next thing we would do to set this up um, even further would be go into our portfolio calculator, add another signal, and then change all the markets to five minute. We we basically we basically looked at each of these separately, one minute, five minute, and fifteen minute. And what we'd like to do next would be to look at this setup um, by adding the five minute with this signal, and then the fifteen minute with this signal, and then run all all of those studies together, and then finally to include the systems from our 100k portfolio trading three contracts each and I believe that that will be the uh, latest will be the latest one million dollar portfolio would be to trade three contracts 
for each market, one on one minute, one on five minute, one on 15 minute, and then the additional signals in our um, 100K portfolio, three contracts. We even increase those to, we even increase that depending on how the numbers look. You could trade two contracts per interval and then six contracts for the other strategies in the 100K portfolio to get a new $1 million portfolio. And so really like this diversity. Um, stay tuned for the updates. That's all that I'm going to show today in this video um, for SR Counter Trend 2, 1 minute, 5 minute, and 15.